was something. I must trace my steps backward. That is no problem for me. I could trace back to the beginning of my life. I could even remember before my little brother was born. But my song, now that's another story. Well, Leander, that is another story. It's a big world out there, and your sock, it could well have come from one of many countries around the globe. South Africa imports goods from around the world. Fashion, like your sock, as well as motor vehicles and parts, crude oil and refined petroleum, gold, diamonds, and more. 90% of the country's gross domestic product, or GDP, comes into the country by sea. South Africa produces and exports these commodities and many others of world-class quality too. That's why the maritime industry is such a vital part of South Africa's economy. The maritime industry? The maritime industry, driving the flow of South Africa's blue economy. One day you could work for one of these companies, Luanda, or you could have your own company. I was born and raised in Ulazi, a township just outside Devon. I've always known that I wanted to work for myself because I come from a family of entrepreneurs. My core business does remain um, maritime. Uh, I've been fortunate that I now uh, participating in the new um, manufacturing of the Transnet Freight Rail lo locomotives. Entrepreneurs like Nana Sabelo play a vitally important role in the maritime industry. But there are so many opportunities in this industry and that's part of what makes it so exciting. I think as, as uh, South Africa, um, in terms of the maritime industry, our biggest handicap currently is skill shortage. So for us to unlock any opportunity in the maritime, I think we, we, we need to beef up in terms of our skills development. I think once we close that gap, then the sky is the limit. There's no limits. It's not just maritime studies that's around. There are so many things in the maritime sector that you can be, and so many things that you can still not necessarily go out to sea and be seagoing as an officer. There are so many other things on land for those people that are more reluctant to go to sea and be away from family. But it's not science and English, and there's a certain percentage that is required before you can um, register for a national diploma in maritime studies. I think growing up I was always driven to succeed and be the best that I can. Discovered the maritime studies career and I was interested uh, from back then in school so I knew exactly what I wanted to do by the time I completed my matric. They need to be driven to succeed. They need to love what they choosing to do. They need to be disciplined. They need to have good maths and science. With all those combined, I have no doubt that the students who choose maritime career will succeed. DUT, CPUT and UKZN may be the only higher education institutions offering maritime studies, but their courses are of an exceptionally high standard and their qualifications are internationally recognized. And for those wanting to enter the maritime industry that require assistance, there are opportunities to access bursaries and scholarships. Various institutions support studies in this field, such as TETA, Transport Education Training Authority. For those that are still at school, we've got bursary opportunities for them. For the master students that are studying maritime, we fund those. Studying, uh, doing a PhD in maritime, we fund those. Uh, those that are still going to FET College, uh, wanting to possibly do maritime and many other careers in transport, we fund those. But we've got a criteria to determine. We definitely fund needy students, so we look at their background. Uh, we do have a way of determining if they are they qualify to get funding. We give them full funding because most of our beneficiaries are from rural areas. So we give them funding, we give them like textbooks, tuition, 
everything including even transport and monthly allowance, a little bit of a monthly allowance for them to manage it. So why does Tita believe so strongly in developing the maritime industry? If I was just to focus on the maritime industry, I would say there's quite a number of opportunities given the fact that the maritime industry is an industry that is currently not really utilized to its maximum potential. So for the young people that might want to really get into the industry, there are different kinds of occupations and opportunities that are coming from maritime. And a young person could be an engineer um, in the different areas. Some could really go into an, a profession like being maybe a marine pilot. Um, they could also be naval architects. They could also get into an area that I like, that I just discovered a few years ago, which is going underwater and becoming underwater artisans. Uh, people that would go underwater and repair ships and oil rigs. You could be a maritime lawyer. You could be, um, you could be an entrepreneur, actually. You could work in a cruise ship. You do beauty, you love cooking, you can work in the ship and prepare food both in a cruise ship and also in the vessels that are carrying goods and cargo. And this is where YCSA comes in. YCSA is the Youth Chamber of Shipping in Africa and is the voice of the youth in Africa's maritime industry. Well, one of the first reasons that led to us establishing the Youth Chamber of Shipping in Africa was because we identified a gap that existed between the companies, maritime companies, the working world, the industrial world within the industry, as well as young professionals who had either attained an undergrad diploma qualification from CPUT or DUT, or those who had even gone to master's level and gotten you know, a master's within the, within the industry. Since this is one of the few industries that is willing to take in individuals coming straight from high school, and is willing to employ them. So we thought there's a gap there. More than that though, to those who don't have any information whatsoever, we say there is an industry such as, you know, the maritime industry or the shipping world, the shipping industry, and there's many opportunities. Where do you think you can see yourself fitting in, if at all? And if you don't see yourself fitting in, well, that's fine, but at least you've had some sort of access to information. There was a huge gap in, um, in information deficits from the industry to the people that it was trying to attract, which is young people. It's an industry that's aging, and Africa is 70% young people. So we thought, well, clearly the industry is unable or is failing to attract young people into it. What is the issue there? And so we thought, let's attract young people through speaking to them in language or communication skills that they you know, understand, we are their peers. Let's attract them into this industry to say, well, young people are being a part of this industry. Don't be afraid, come on board in order for a proper and efficient skills transfer to take place. YCSA is about bridging gaps. Whether you're a learner who's hearing about the maritime industry for the very first time, an established role player within the industry, or even a government that wants to support the growth of the blue economy, YCSA can take you to greater frontiers. In association with TITA and supported by the Department of Higher Education, YCSA is running expos around the country to awaken learners to the possibilities in this exciting industry. Wow, I would like to go somewhere like that. Maybe they'll come to you, Luyanda. YCSA will be visiting high schools in KZN and around the country. For all this information and more, visit the YCSA Facebook page, follow YCSA on Twitter, and visit the website at www.ycsafrica.org.